Fuel your next workout with Fresh Fin. Fresh Fin's mission is to promote a healthier lifestyle in their communities by serving great tasting food with excellent value and service. In addition to high quality seafood, Fresh Fin also offers a variety of alternative proteins such as all white meat chicken, slow cooked pork, and marinated tofu. Mix those with their scratch made sauces, freshly chopped produce, and a variety of toppings. Their customizable bowl options are endless. You can find six Fresh Fin locations in the Milwaukee and Madison, Wisconsin areas, and even two in the Salt Lake City, Utah areas. Check them out online at www.freshfinpook.com. So I started wrestling when I was around four years old. My dad had brought my two older brothers to wrestling practice in Watertown. And then he, my dad started a wrestling program. Well, my dad and like his friends started it. So like my dad, Reggie Rail, Randy Rail, Brian Pernat, and... I want to say one other person, but I'm blank. Oh, Big Mark, Big Mark Leminger, um, started a wrestling program. I, I don't know like who was the head of it or anything like that. But then when I got old enough, so like four or five years old, started going there. Um, and yeah, that's how I started wrestling. My first practice, I have no idea how it was like because I was so young. But I did hear a story one time uh, from Big Mark when I was like a kid. He says he remembers it. And uh, we're doing like, we're about to go live, right? And they used, he was like, ready, set. And then like he just said he took a long pause and then he'd say like, you know, some more like pizza or something like that, you know? And he says, uh, he did that like two or three times. And he said, I looked up at him with like this really angry face. And I was like, just fucking say go already. <laughs> So, but I, uh, so I, I, I was probably a little like tenacious running around the whole time. Probably my first memory when I had a wrestling <clears throat> was probably like, like just faint memories of like running around tournaments and stuff with my friend. It probably didn't even have to do with wrestling, you know. Like, I remember being in the crick room, um, being like down in like the basement place. Yeah, being in that, like, that room. I remember, like, water leaking on the mat some nights. Um, playing dodgeball down there. We used to do coaches versus, like, kids, you know. Um, and we used to play with the small, like, rubber dodgeballs. Like, really, like those size ones. Um, and then my first wrestling memory, like, that really stuck with me would probably be when I, like, won state as a third grader, you know. Like, I always remember that moment. Um... But yeah, I would say just probably like running around on the mats and stuff like that. Nothing big. Uh, Wilder did it too. So it was like me and my dad and Wilder. And like when I was little, like I just wanted to do anything my dad did, you know. So um, I knew he wrestled in high school. So I was like, all right, then, you know, I wrestle. And then um, running around on the mats was always fun. Like just I feel like I was like a rough and rowdy kid, you know. So like anything to anything like physical and, st and competitive I liked. Um, but yeah, that was probably what drew me in was just being around everybody like that. And then also like we wrestled around all the time in the house and then you just got to do it like actual, you know. Um, the household, I say when we were kids, we were like really competitive. Like we played board game, we were competitive. Like we would wrestle around. Um, we used to like have so like play swords and sword fight and stuff like that. Like we were always competing against each other. Me and Wilder used to play like Madden and stuff, always be competing against each other. Walker was a little younger, so, like, didn't have that as much, just because, like, he wasn't, like, I guess he, we were just too much, old, too old old for him, so, like, it wasn't as competitive with him, but, like, between me and Wilder, Wilder probably got the better of me in a lot of stuff, just because he was two years older, but, like, me and him were super competitive at home. I remember we used to, like, when we were really small, we used to box downstairs. Um, he used to beat the shit out of me. Um... But, and then as we got older, it turned more to like, we're doing it together type deal. But when we were younger, it was always like competitive against each other. And then like, as probably, probably when we got to like into high school, it was like, we're doing it together. And then that continued on through college, obviously. I guess a youth state title, I don't, I don't know. Like I guess making it to state um, and youth in like second grade and stuff like that. But 
Um, I don't know. I'm kind of, honestly kind of low on like accomplishments in the sport. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess my first like major one would be making the state finals as a freshman in high school. But like, even now I kind of look at that and it's like not that great of an accomplishment. I mean, it's a good accomplishment, but it's just like in the larger spectrum of things. Um, I don't know. I don't really think I have like a, a great accomplishment or anything like that. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't think I was like ever, or like I know I, I knew I got like you know I guess to a higher level of wrestling and like was, you know, in that in that higher level aspect of like the higher level percentile of wrestling. But like I don't think I achieved like that much in in the sport or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, I always like love the sport. Uh, I think like roughhousing and stuff like that. I just like that aspect of it. Um, but I would say I really like truly love the sport. Like probably probably once I started like fully diving into it, like when I like really focused down. And I would say that was probably around my junior year is when I actually remember um, Ben Peterson was at a sectional tournament, and at the time, um, it would have been my junior year. So right be right before I started loving this, like I would say like like really diving into the sport. Um, and I was wrestling at sectionals and Ben Peterson was helping at Whitewater. So we had kind of like our, like me and Wilder kind of had a relationship with Ben Peterson because Ben Peterson would talk to the Whitewater team all the time. And then I would go up and train with Wilder sometimes and Ben Peterson would be there every once in a while. And we'd talk to him for a little bit. And so I was talking to him at sectionals and um, he asked me actually like if I really loved the sport. And at the time I said yes. And he like questioned me on it for some reason. Like, I mean, and he didn't know me that well, but he questioned me on it for some reason. Uh, and then like, and then I really dove into sport probably like two or three months later. And then like, and I think about like that moment was like where I was at with the sport when he was talking to me and then where I was at in sport like three months later. And like, I definitely love the sport three months later, but I don't know if I did like, you know, maybe, I don't know if it would be like, you're doing it for the wrong reason. I don't think I was doing it for the wrong reasons, but like, you know, maybe I wasn't like fully in it yet, you know, even though that, like I was doing it year round, it was the only sport I played, but like something flipped in those like two to three months and like, but I always loved wrestling and stuff like that. Just, it got deeper as I got older. I mean, Ben Peterson is an Olympic champ. I'm pretty sure he got either silver or bronze another year in the Olympics. And I think he's a world medalist once or twice. Um, my third grade year, of I, I, Wilder went to a fifth grader, fifth and sixth grade practice, or maybe it was like fifth through eighth grade or something like that, in Milton, coached by Josh Wagner, um, who's actually an Askren coach now. Um, but he ran a Milton Monster Advanced or something like that, like a Milton Monster Accelerated. That's what it was called. He ran a practice. We went to that practice in third grade instead of going to the Crick practice. Um, and then in fifth grade, a guy named Russ Davey ran a practice that was a seventh and eighth grade practice. And so I got into these practices only because Wilder was old enough. And then like, I would just come along and I would get the shit kicked out of me all the time. Cause I was, I was two years younger than everybody and like 20 to 30 pounds lighter probably. Um, but uh, yeah, and then we in fifth grade, we went to Whitewater um, practice ran by Russ Davey. That was 7th and 8th grade practice. And then I'm not really sure where I went after that. And then 7th and 8th grade, I think I went to Askren's maybe. Like off and on maybe. And then freshman year and sophomore year of high school, um, I went to Advance with Wilder and Adam. And that was really fun. I really liked Advance. Brad Owens was the head coach there. And he was a good dude. Yeah, there were assistant coaches and guys like Sonny Shield, Eddie, Eddie Smith, Jeremiah Moody, Cole Martin, um, Milton guys, Stone guys, Garrett Modell. Yeah, they were all at that practice. That was really fun. We used to play this warm-up game called Battle Ball. And it was like there was like no rules. It was basically like it was like uh uh, ultimate frisbee where you like you throw it and if you drop it you know like it's the other team's ball three steps with the ball if you dribble it you get three more steps and then you have to pass it um, 
but there was just like no rules and there was two tires on each end of the room and you just had to get it in the opposing people's tires. The only rule was you got three steps with the ball, you had to dribble it um, to get three more steps or pass it. So the only rules, it was really fun. Um, what kept me coming back by getting my ass kicked at these practices was one, like I'm just not a quitter. <laughs> um, I don't know, I wasn't born to, like I just wasn't raised that way, I guess. And I've always like, yeah, yeah, I mean, even when we were at home, like, wow, they would kick the shit out of me and I would never, like, back off, you know? Like, we, like, it would be like if he beats me in a game of Madden, I'd be like, all right, let's play again, you know? And then, or he beats me in boxing, like, you know, I'd take whatever and then I'd be like, all right, let's go again. Board game, let's go again. We used to play chess and checkers. We used to play, uh, we used to play cards and wow, they used to cheat. And, like, so he would always win. And I would just be like, all right, let's play again, let's play again, let's play again. Because I just wanted to figure out how to win. Um, and I've, I would say I've just always been like that. I've always been, like, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter what's going, like, how bad I'm losing or whatever. Like, I, I just need to figure out how to win. I, I don't know where that kind of comes from, whether it's from, like, watching Rocky movies or that is just, like, how my parents raised me. I don't really know. But that's just how I was. Like, I mean, there's plenty of hard times. There's plenty of nights where I was crying my ass off, for sure. But, and like nights where like I wanted to quit or something like that and stuff like that. But I guess I just never did. Like I, I think it just came back to like being a rough, like rough housing kid, you know? I didn't really enjoy the other sports that weren't like that. I mean, I saw success a little bit into those rooms. Like I didn't get my ass kicked by every single person. There was always like kids that I could beat, you know, that were even two years older. But like my dad would tell me go with like the better kids. So that's what I would do. So a lot of, a lot of the nights, like I chose like kids that were going to beat me up. Um, cause that's how, how my dad taught, like, that's how my dad taught me to get better at, at the sport. He was like, you're not going to get better just beating up kids. So go get beat up and you'll get better. And I was like, all right. Um, and then I would say I really didn't see, like, I really wasn't beating that great of kids until like, I really dove into the sport my junior year of high school. Like I felt like. I became one of the leaders in the Askren room around like my junior year and stuff like that. And I, I don't feel, feel if it was age or anything like that because the people that were leading around me, it was like Josh Otto and Keegan O'Toole who were younger than me as well. Um, so I don't think it had anything to do with age. Um, I think it was just like, we had a kind of a core group of guys that like stepped up and we're like, Hey, we're going to get better. You can either get better with us or like go in the corner and don't like, you know, like don't ruin our practice type deal. Um, and I would say we had a really good group of guys for that. And that's when I started seeing like success, but I, I never really had that success in competition. Like I beat good guys before. I remember in high school, like I wrestled this one kid, I beat him. And then, like, I was told he was a good guy after after the match or something like that, you know. And right before my senior year of state, I placed at two preseason um, national tournaments. Not big ones or anything like that, but, like, you know, Midwestern tournaments. Um, so I guess there. Uh, and then just in the practice room, like, me and Josh Otto would have good goes. Keegan kind of always beat me, but we would have good goes every once in a while. And, like... Kids like that, I would, I would go with, you know? So, I, but I wouldn't say I ever had like a win where it was like, dang, that I just beat a really good kid or something like that. Advanced was a lot different than Askren's. Advanced was more of like, get in, work hard, uh, wrestle live. So we would do like, we, we would work technique and stuff like that. We worked a lot of technique in advance. Um, it'd probably be, it was two hours practice, probably play, warmed up for a little bit. Um, and then we would get into drill, learn technique, get into a hard drill, still learning technique, and then we'd probably go live for 45 minutes every single day. It was probably like hour 15 of practice live for 45 minutes. Um, and as far as practice partners, Tristan Jenny, Eric Verseth were practice partners my first year there. Um, had a couple others, Cody Suddeth. Um, I had, I had some other ones there too. I, I, not, I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. Uh, Drew Shamrock was one of my partners there. Um, I don't really know anyone else. And then I don't really even know who I wrestled with my second year there because those guys would all have been gone. Um, 
besides Cody Suddeth. But um, I mean, I probably practiced with Adam sometimes there. But that room was like a tough, like grungy type room. Black mats, like kind of kept the room dark. Um, it was just like a filled room, a lot of guys there. And we would scrap. Just everyone was there to scrap. And it was fun. It was really fun. Um, but yeah, that, that advance was super fun. And it was like, it was like, a, but it was like still like a lighthearted group. Like we would fuck around and stuff like that. But like when it came to practice, we would all get serious because Brad, like Brad wouldn't let you fuck around during practice. He would just kick you out of practice. You were, you wanted to talk or something like that. He would make, stop the whole group, make everyone run. And then if you continue talking, he would just kick you out of practice. Um, but there was plenty of times where it was like, there was too much talking. We would just do sprints for like 20 minutes. And then we'd get back to wrestling. So Brad Owens uh, was a coach at Advance. And one time in a high school match, I was beat this kid, like a, throwing a dirty 30 on him, right? That's where you take him down, like however many X amount of times to tackle him. You only tackle him with takedowns. Um, and I, for my last takedown, I jumped as high as I could and clapped the bump of my head, landed, and shot a double leg on him, and took him down to win the match. And uh, and he was at, Brad Owens was at the tournament and he comes up to me in the next practice at advance and he basically told me like, like you, like he's fine with how I wrestled the match up until the clap double. And he's like, I should have just took the kid down, ended the match. Cause like bad kids, you don't like, don't embarrass a bad kid. Like you already embarrassed him enough by taking him down 15 times. Like he's like, you know, if you want to do that to a good kid, that's fine. Um, but like you don't need to be flashy when you're beating up some kid that's probably never wrestled in his life, which I get. And he made me do like he made me do a bunch of sprints after practice for it. But I, I get it. Um, he you know he didn't want and he didn't want that being like he didn't want his guys showboat and stuff like that. So I, I get it. But it was funny. Yeah, that's one thing I've always respected about like club coaches that I've had like Ben and Brad and stuff like that. Like you weren't. They weren't there to get your money. They were there to like make you better people and better wrestlers. They weren't there just to like, hey, pay me. I'll run you through practice and like, you know, outside of the two hours that you, I have with you, like, I don't care about your life at, at whatsoever. Um, so I, I re- like all, all, all the coaches I've had, like Ben, Max, um, well, Max and Ben Askren, and then Brad, Cole Schmidt, and stuff like that. Josh Wagner, like, they care about you outside of the room too, which I think is really cool. And I, I like the accountability that they hold for you. The story that got me really low is like I had, I probably had my first injury sophomore year of high school. I tore my labrum and the doctor just said it was like a torn muscle or something like that. So I took like a month or two off and then came back and like I could try to go through like two or three advanced practices with like, and my arm was just like hanging, you know, because I had a torn labrum and like, so I guess that would be like a low moment at advance or Eric first Seth one time we did, we, we did a lot of groups of three takedowns at advance, um, for like long goes. Like we did a 45 minute go group of three takedown. It was me, Eric first Seth and Tristan Jenny. And we actually all made the state finals this year. Um, but Eric first Seth won state, Tristan Jenny got second, I got second, but, um, we did a 45 minute long go takedowns winner stays in. And Eric versus Seth got every single takedown of the go and never got it, would never went out for 45 minutes. That was pretty embarrassing. Like me and Tristan Jenny couldn't take him down one time in a 45 minute span. Um, so that sucked. High moment. Um, I mean, I would just like, I just liked coming to practice, you know, and like scrapping. But uh, a funny moment, I will give you a funny moment was it was me and this kid named, uh, oh, what was his name? He was like a, a heavyweight or maybe 220 or something like that. And I was like 120 at the time, um, maybe 126 at the time. But we were playing battle ball and uh, a ball got thrown and we both went to catch it, like intercept it, right? And, uh, and we ran head in, like head on head into each other. And, uh, and I knocked him, like, uh, like dazed him and knocked him right on his ass. It was sick. Like, I laid out, like, this 220-pound kid as, like, a 120-pounder, <laughs> laid him out, dude. Neither of us saw each other, so, like, we both kind of got blindsided. 
But like it just happened that I laid him out and I was fine and he was like he like had to sit out the rest of the practice. <laughs> yeah, my freshman year I definitely had people that like doubted me. Um it probably put it definitely put a chip on my shoulder my freshman year. Like I think back to wrestling my freshman year and like I would go I I it probably like wrestled how I wrestled, like didn't pin kids and I would just like take him down and let him up, take him down and let him up, take him down and let him up. Like that kind of wrestling probably stemmed from me having a chip on my shoulder and just trying to like beat the shit out of kids instead of like just beat them. Um, Cause I was like pissed off. Uh, and that carried out throughout the whole season. But also like that came, that, that style of wrestling came from too. Like I would be down in a lot of matches. Like most of, like probably the, there was a lot of matches my freshman year where I probably came into like the third period down in points and I'd win the match by like eight or nine points after that. Um, but yeah, I definitely wrestled with a chip on my shoulder my freshman year. It probably carried me to the state finals. It definitely did. In the state semifinals, I was down, I think, by six points headed into the third period. And I think I took the kid down like six times to tie up the match and then took him down in overtime for like a seventh. Um, definitely had a chip on my shoulder my freshman year of high school. And then I kind of got hurt and it kind of went away and it took me a while to get it back, to be honest. Uh, losing the state championship sucked. Uh, making it to the finals with Wilder, being my freshman year of high school. Um, you know, you got thoughts running through your head of like being a four timer already because you're just a freshman and you're in the finals, you know, and like you got to win as a freshman to be a four timer. You got to win every year as to be a four timer, but like, you know, usually the freshman year is the hardest year, and now you find yourself in the finals against the kid you have no idea who he is, but he's another freshman. Um, and yeah, it's ex it was exciting. And then, yeah, just to lose it sucked. And just to lose it how I did too. Got thrown in my back and pinned, like that sucks. I feel like, you know I mean? It was a good move and stuff like that. Like I don't like the expression of like got caught, but like, yeah, I just like hit a move and you know, he hit a good one and I got put to my back, but it was like kind of a tight match. Other than that, I think it was three to one or something like that uh, when I, when that happened. So um, I'm not saying I like I don't know what it would happen if I didn't get thrown in my back, but yeah, it sucked. And then not to make it back there again really sucked. I mean, while they're being brothers and wrestling together on the same team, like while we're in while we're in high school and stuff like that, it was like the coolest thing ever, especially because we were like. It wasn't like one of us was like, I mean, Wilder was more successful than I was in high school, but like, as far as like the tournaments we were going to and stuff like that, like we were both winning basically every tournament we were going to. Um, so that was really cool. Just like go in there, like fucking shit up <laughs> and then we'd leave it. And like also having Adam there with us too was really cool. Like, you know, the group of three of us are going to outside practices, stuff like that, doing extra on the side doing you know me and Wilder going year round of practices going to camps um and then to like go through high school season together and stuff like that that's really cool to make the state finals is really cool together and that's why it was like such a big opportunity like to win it together that was always our goal was to win it together um and we did it when I was in fifth grade and he was in seventh grade we won state together which was really cool um but like youth doesn't really matter that much and like high school is a little more bigger of a deal than youth you know and like to win it as brothers would be super cool. Like, I, I mean, how many people do that as brothers? You know, probably not many. Um, and so that was a lost opportunity right there. But as far as like him, it lighting a fire under him to win the state finals, like he was probably going to win the state finals anyway. You know, maybe it helped out. Like I know he cared about me winning the state final. He probably got more nervous for my match than he did for his. Same with me to him. Like I get nervous for his matches more than I get nervous for mine. Just because, like, the controllability part of it, like, you can't control any of it. Um, but, yeah, it was it was really cool. It's really fun. There's a cool article that at, uh, Adam was actually getting interviewed in that, that Watertown reporter. He asked Adam a couple questions about, like, mine and Wilder's relationship. Um, it was a pretty cool article. So, but it was, it was, it was really fun wrestling with Wilder. Go My on. sophomore season in high school started off really good. Obviously, like, coming back from making the state finals, like, here in my head, I'm like, okay, but, you know, I'm going to kick ass all year and then win state this year. Um, it was kind of like a no-brainer for me. And then, yeah, I had that shoulder problem. Doctor said it was a torn muscle, took a month off, um, come back, and, like, my shoulder still feels like shit. I think I've tried to wrestle. 
I think I wrestled through most of the season with it, um, feeling terrible. I didn't know what was going on. Finally, I was like, yeah, I got to go get this checked out. Like, it hurts really bad. Comes back with a torn labrum. I think I wrestled one tournament more after that, and then, and then I got surgery after that. Um, but, so that sucked. Um, it was first, first injury is definitely the hardest one to come back from. Just mentally, it's like, it mentally it, it screws you up because uh, you're like scared to get hurt again you don't know if you can trust your body anymore you don't know how hard you can push yourself um obviously like the way i handled the situation of both, like just wrestling through the pain probably wasn't the healthiest either because like now i'm scared to feel that pain again um but yeah the heart I, I would say the first injury is always the hardest for me at least um, it was and Coming back junior year, then, like, after I injured myself, like, wasn't easy at all. I definitely dropped some matches I wasn't supposed to be dropping. Uh, didn't have a lot of confidence about myself, and, like, that showed in my competition. No, I have no idea what match I got hurt in for my sophomore year. My senior year, I, did, I remember the matches, but, like, my sophomore year, it was just kind of, like, a thing, like, my shoulders started hurting. Um... And then the Houston's for a match, I was just wrestling some scrub, uh, like maybe from was, like Horcon or something like that. I, I don't know where he was from. Some scrub. Uh, not good at all. I remember I wrestled him my first year in high school, and I was like sicker than a dog, like really sick. And, uh, and we had like a barn burner match too. And I remember getting my hand raised. It was like in crick too. Get my hand raised, and like I ran up, ran off, like. Got hand raised, sprinted off the mat straight to the bathroom and threw up like four or five times because I felt like such shit. Uh, and then I wrestled them and I could like barely move my arm. And then I was trying backflips in warm ups and I hurt my knee and I put doing a backflip. And, uh, and then so like I could barely, I was like limping around all day. I was, I remember like the whole day I was just like throwing kids, I'm pretty sure, to their back and just pinning them. And I got like this barn burner match with this scrub again uh, at the Houston for an invite finals. And it ended up going to like triple OT or something like that. And I, I won the match and got like most valuable wrestler. But it was, it was pathetic. It was not a good match. I would say it was just like, it was hard for me to comprehend like I couldn't wrestle. And then to, and it was hard for me to comprehend that I had to take six months off of wrestling. So like I wasn't even really thinking about like next year. I was like, like, what about this year? You know, like, I, I was very, like, you know, like, no, I have, like, I have to wrestle this year, you know? Um, and so that sucked. And then, like, the next year, it was just, like, I couldn't get my confidence up. Um, I wasn't wrestling good. Felt like practice wasn't, like, going good for me. You know, probably part of it was like I didn't have Wilder there with me. You know, I like I felt, probably felt like I was the only good person on the team at the time. I couldn't get my confidence up from the injury. I wasn't wrestling like I was, you know, I knew I could. Um, me and Wilder always drove each other forward. So I always had someone in my ear like telling me like, hey, you can do it, stuff like that. Like even if he didn't like directly tell me that, you know, like stuff like that. Um, and so I felt like I was like, I, I really think I would like, just felt like I wasn't around any like-minded people, you know, like I didn't have anybody there pushing me. Um, I had no one there. Like, you know, like when you have team camaraderie that ups your confidence, you know, like I felt like I didn't have that. Um, and it was just all around. Like I just was, yeah, I just wasn't wrestling good. Wasn't enjoying the sport as much as I normally did. Stuff like that. I'm going to Askrens, but I'm kind of going through the motions at this point. After my junior year, I had like a lapse of like, fuck it, I'm done for the summer. Um, and I wasn't going to wrestle for the summer. Uh, and then Ben Askren was like, hey, I want you to go to Flow Nationals with some of the, with me and a couple other guys. And it was Peyton Mako, Jacob Roshka, Eric Helverson, Keegan O'Toole, and Val Akujo. Mm -hmm. um, that could be wrong. Um, but... Uh, so we went out to Flow Nationals, and I actually wrestled good there. For some like for some weird reason, I wrestled good there, and I th I only think I went like two and two or something like, like that. But I wrestled good, um, and that like got me going again. Like that that's when, right after that tournament is when I started taking practice super seriously. Like I was like oh like I like I wrestled decently. 
I went out, had fun. And I think it was like, because I was with these higher guy, like level guys who were winning matches out there and stuff like that. Like Peyton Mako, I think went into like a super like long match with Sammy Sasson that weekend. And maybe Jacob Brashford, you know, tool won it or something like that. And so like, I saw these guys doing it and I was like, okay. And I got super serious right after that tournament. And then like that led through like a really good training session all through, all the way through that summer into my senior year. I think I found like what Wilder and Adam gave me, like that team camaraderie aspect and like, you know, like we were there to take first place and that's it, you know, that, that port portion of it. I think I found that when I started taking Astrid, like not that I wasn't taking Astrid seriously, but when I started taking wrestling seriously and like really diving into practices and stuff like that and paying attention getting myself with the best partners, stuff like that. And now I felt like I had a team outside of my like actual team, you know, like I had Askrens as a team, like I wrestled four Askrens now. Uh, and we all, you know, we were there for one reason that was become the best in the state, best in the nation, right? And we all had this like, oh, and it gave me like a sense of like purpose and like on a team, you know, it gave me that team aspect of it to like drive forward and like, get better together type deal. So yeah, I think Askren's filled that gap of like Wilder and Adam being gone. Summer after junior year, trained really hard, went to Fargo, didn't get the, I didn't wrestle get at Fargo, come back, training even harder, blah, 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 put in a bunch of time. Ben wants me to go to these two preseason tournaments with Askren. So I was like, okay, I'll go. Um, and, or maybe he was just taking people and I wanted to go. I, I forget that part. But I went to these two preseason tournaments First tournament, I wrestled like kind of a little bit heavier because um, I think I think they just had weird weight classes and I was like, no, I'm not cutting all the way there. I'm just going to wrestle heavier. Uh, and so I wrestled heavier and like had a little pain in my shoulder that weekend. Next weekend, go to the next tournament and I have like a bunch of pain the entire time I'm there. I end up placing at both of them. And I remember sitting in the hotel room with my dad and I was like, Dad, like, my shoulder is, like, really hurting. He's like, oh, it's probably just sore from, like, wrestling so much because I wrestled a bunch of matches in, you know, a span of one week. And I was like, no, like, there's something wrong with it, I think. Because at this point, it was my other shoulder. Um, my other one besides my, junior, my sophomore year one, different shoulder. Um, and so we go get it checked out right before season, a couple months, or maybe a couple weeks before season. And, yeah, torn labrum. So I'm like, all right, like, you know. I'm, I'm done you know like got a surgery and we actually had the surgery scheduled we like had it scheduled and then ben said like i tell ben and ben's like no you're not gonna get surgery you'll just like you're just gonna like shadow wrestle every single day come in here wrestle around a little bit in a controlled environment wrestle with wilder so he's a controlled environment and and then you'll just wrestle regional sectionals in the state and you'll win state. And I was like, okay. So we canceled the surgery. I started working out, uh, doing like personal training with a guy named Jim Savage all year. And then I was wrestling with Ben and Wilder all year. And then I would do, I think it was like, I think I had like a 45 minute stance and motion workout that I would do during crick practice. Um, and, uh, and then I would just help out in crick practice. Other than that, yeah, yeah. Um, to be back on the mat and stuff like that, like come regional time, like I was waiting all season, obviously, like watching everyone wrestle. I would go to the tournaments with everyone and stuff like that. Getting back on the mat my senior year for regionals was really fun. I remember I was like super like, like a positive anxious to get back out on the mat. Like almost, I was honestly like almost too wound up like for my match. Um, went out there, wrestled good, beat the kid. It was fun. Um. I actually remember, like, I wrestled, I only had two matches. I wrestled the match, won it, and then won the finals. And then me and Wilder went in the practice room that was right behind the gym and, like, got, like, a 45-minute wrestle in together because, like, the two kids I wrestled weren't good. <laughs> sectionals, I mean, I guess, yeah. I remember I bit my lip in sectionals, um, and it was bleeding all over the mat, and I used up all my blood time against the Dodgelin kid at sectionals that year. Um, like I always bit a hole through my lip, like the whole, like this whole part right here was a, just a big gash. And, uh, my dad went to like Walmart or Walgreens or something and bought skin glue. It's like Elmer's skin glue. And you put it on like cuts and stuff to hold them together. And I would just like dump that in my mouth 
and to close like off this cut. Um, and it would like, it wouldn't hold there very well, but it would hold well enough and like kind of make the blood clot up a little bit. Um, so it like wouldn't drown me, but I was like bleeding all over during sectionals. I thought I was going to lose the match cause I would run out of blood time. Um, so I like, I had to like, I think I had to like tech that, that Dodgeland kid and I was like holding him off full of blood while I was doing it. Um, and then yeah, Bill Condon in the, in the finals. Um, I think I majored him though. So I, uh, I probably had like the most confidence I've ever had my senior year for some reason. Like I was a man on a mission last year in high school, had to win a state title that year was practicing really hard, put a lot of time into it, put a bunch of effort into it. Like that's all I thought about. That's what I lived about. Like, like put my whole, like that was when I was like living, breathing, wrestling. Like that's all I thought about during school. That's what I did. Like after school, shadow wrestling, went and coached wrestling, worked out with Jim Savage. Like that's all I did. Um, I think I was just ready to win it. That uh, like senior season being in the Cole Center again, like I was just ready to win it. That's, That's about the only feeling I had. I was like there for one thing, one thing only, and that was to win state. And, like, I had it in my head that I was going to win state. I was damn near positive I was going to win state. Like, that's that's it. Like, it wasn't any feeling past that. I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm here to win this. And that's it. First match of the day for senior year. Um, I had a bye Thursday night, Friday morning. Um, we get up. First match, I don't know. I have no idea who I wrestled. I'm pretty sure I beat the shit out of them, though. Um, and, yeah, not much to tell about that. I'm pretty sure I absolutely fucking dog walk them. um like I, i'm like nothing nothing else to it I'm, I'm pretty sure i'm like embarrassed forever um and then i i could be wrong about that though i have no idea but i'm i don't remember that first match so i'm assuming i dog walked them yeah going in like semifinals of state my senior year i really don't re- like remember what i was feeling or i don't remember it very well um just that I was probably just feeling the same as I was like I remember saying to Luke in the hotel like before going there like it was Thursday night we were about to hop in the vans um to go to like to the Cole Center um to wrestle like the semifinal match and I remember telling saying to Luke I was like all right let's go kick this kid's ass and then come back like that uh, right before we left the hotel room um other than that I really don't remember I was probably just ready and then I was winning the match. Everything was going good. Uh, what I, what the score was, whatever it was, and um, yeah, I got thrown in my back with the ten seconds left. Lost by a point or two, and like I remember laying on my back, bridging. My dad sitting in the seat. Um, I'm looking at him like I'm arched up on my head, like looking at him. So he's upside down. And I was just like, I just remember like my heart dropping. It sucked. Um, it was a blow. It was a big blow. Yeah, I, I remember just like arching on my back, nothing I could do, looking at my dad. That sucked. Um, walking off the mat, and then I like, got into the tunnel and like kind of broke down in the tunnel. But like, yeah, it wasn't fun. It was just like you know you reach for things where it's like when you like lose a match like that, you reach for things where it's like, you know what could I have done? Blah blah blah, like that kind of stuff. But it's like. I mean, there's not much else I could have done there, but like, I I put my heart and soul into it. I worked just about as hard as like I could. I worked around my circumstances and like, I just like, God, but there was nothing really I could do. Broke down in the tunnel and like cried for a while, cried for a long time in the tunnel. And I was like, I, mean, I was there. I, I don't know what to say about it. It was, it sucked. It was, it was a hard time. I'll be honest, it was hard. They're like the rest of the weekend didn't matter to me anymore. I mean, I wrestled the Concy semis match against the kid that was actually ranked one, number one in our bracket. Me and him, like me, I could tell me and him both just were like, it's probably a bad attitude to have, but we both just didn't give a shit that match. Yeah, I think he was beating. I think he was beating me the whole match, and I took him down and put him to his back in the third period with like a minute forty, like right away in the third period. Like I shot a double leg or something, got to a Turk and put him to his back. He was beating me by like maybe two points or something like that. Um, and I remember I didn't try to pin him and he didn't try to get off his back. And we just laid there for a minute, 45 seconds. 
and the match got over. We shook hands and we walked off. Like there was no fight from him to get off his back. And I, I just didn't try to pin him. I just was like, I was like, I'm okay. If he's just going to lay here, I'm just going to lay here. Like get this, let this time run out. I will just sit here in this turf for a minute, 45 seconds. And that's what we did. And then third place match came up, went out there, got taken down instantly, put to my back and pinned. Yeah, I got the labrum surgery. I think the labrum surgery was either day after state or it was either the next day or the day after that. So like one or two days after the state tournament. I think I took five months off, started drilling at five months, and then like fully back at six months for that. Um, so I didn't do much throughout the summer. And then I didn't have a college to go to, so I took a year off and just trained at Askrens. And then when I was healthy, me and Wilder, because Wilder also took a year off of college that year, me and him would just go wrestle in open tournaments by ourselves, and we would just wrestle and have fun college open tournaments. I decided I wanted to wrestle in college. Like once, uh, my like when I got serious about it my junior year, I was like, I want to wrestle division one college wrestling. And so no one was looking for me, obviously, because I didn't have any accomplishments in high school, division one programs, at least. Like I, I, Ned Shuck at Whitewater is looking at me, Elroy Perkin at, uh, it's not, maybe Stout was looking at me. I, that doesn't sound right, but the dog one. Pointers. Steven's point. He was looking at me. Um, Coach Z from uh, Madison Area Technical College or Milwaukee. I don't know. One of those. One of those. I think it was yeah Madison maybe. He was looking at me. Uh, these were just guys like I I had come in contact with like through the Wisconsin national team and stuff like that that I like connected with. Um, but like I really wanted to go Division One. I. I actually sent out an email before Fargo to like a fuck ton of coaches, Division One coaches. Have no idea if any one of them got them. But uh, sent out an email to them saying like asking them to watch me in far at Fargo, and then obviously laid a brick in Fargo. So if any of them were watching, they probably crossed me off their list after that. But um, um, yeah, I mean I I didn't really like I wasn't like depressed or anything that there was no schools looking for me like. Obviously, it sucked. I didn't. I didn't know what I was gonna do. Like that was depressing. And I was like, "Well, I wanted to wrestle Division One, but like, where the where do I do that at?" You know. Um, so that sucked. But other like I, I mean, I just kind of assumed I wasn't gonna get recruited. You know. So I was ready to walk onto a team just wherever. I was gonna walk on Madison, yeah, because so I didn't have to pay out of state tuition, but I probably would have been the same anyway, because Madison's pretty expensive. The summer I was taking off, Kyle Rochelle got the job at Chattanooga, um, the head coaching job there. He was assistant coach at Wisconsin, so Ben Askren knew him. So Ben asked me, like, would I want to visit Chattanooga? And I was like, hey, dude, I would visit any Division One school. Like, I actually first asked him, like, is Chattanooga Division One? And then, like, I was like, yeah, like, if it's Division One, I'll go visit it. Never heard of it um, before that. And then um, Ben... I, I the way I uh, the way I remember it is like Ben called Kyle, told him I was coming on a visit, and or you know asked about me or whatever, like asked if I could come on a visit, and then Ben called me and was like, hey, you're going on a visit November twelfth or something like that, or November eleventh or something like that to Chattanooga, and I was like, all right. So Ben was teaching like a clinic like thirty minutes away from here. So me and him flew to Atlanta, drove here together. He dropped me off. I took a visit for two or three days here. Ben picked me up. We went back. The visit really went really well. Um, and I think I flew back, and the night I got back, I think I called Kyle back. I was like, yeah, I'm coming down. And then that was it. Ben was asking me how I liked it when I, we were, like, coming back um, on, from the trip, you know. I was like, yeah, I liked it a lot, you know. Like, and he's, like, definitely somewhere I could see myself going. And he's like, okay, so why aren't you – why didn't you tell him yes, like, when you had your meeting at the end of the recruitment visit of whether or not you want to go here? And I was like, I guess I don't know, you know. And he's like, well, you're not getting looked at by any other schools and you're not going on any other visits. So, like, call him back and tell him yes. And so that's what I did. They seemed happy. They seemed like they – like, when I was on my recruiting visit, they seemed really excited about me for some reason. So, I don't know. I guess it was just Ben's word or what. I did wrestle a little bit while I was down here, and I kicked the shit out of the other kid that was on one of the other kids on my recruiting visit. Like, beat him up bad. And, and I guess he was a good recruit. And so 
that might have been a little bit of a like that that might have helped my case because I beat the ever living dog shit out of the kid and he was like I, I think he was a pretty good recruit he actually he didn't end up coming here but like me beating that kid that's like you know being recruited and stuff like that and I have no idea how like I, I don't I don't I, I'm pretty sure he was a good recruit I'm pretty sure uh, but yeah, like him being there and stuff like that, probably getting cert. I mean, he went to a different college, so someone else wanted him as well, you know? Um, like, I wasn't mad about it. I mean, I didn't, I didn't do anything, you know? I had no accomplishments to go off of. Like, how are, how are they going to recruit me? They don't, you know, they don't know who I am, you know? So, like, I knew I had it in me. That's why I wanted to go to Division I. Like, I knew, like, I knew who I was myself. I just needed to get it out in front of people, and every chance I had that, I screwed it up. It meant a lot that they like decided to take a chance on me. That was a big. That was like another big reason why I really wanted to come here. Was like, they seemed excited about me, and I like that aspect of it. Like, I liked that. Like, they seemed like they wanted me, and it wasn't just they were like doing a favor for Ben or something, or like, you know, like, yeah, we're a small D one program. You can just you can come, I guess, you know. So like, it, it was cool that they seemed excited about me and stuff like that. Um, so that, that pumped me up a little bit, yeah if I won a national championship at Chattanooga and like another college wanted me like what would I do and I probably was like yeah I'm like fuck those colleges like I mean the answer would still be the same like I wouldn't go but that was probably just me like having a chip on my shoulder being like you know like I mean I'm not that old but like you know a high schooler and stuff like that um but yeah, I mean, they, yeah, like, the obvious, like, it was probably like, fuck you, you didn't want to take a chance on me, but like, how are they going to take a chance on me? Like, they literally just don't know who I am, you know, like, they, they probably just never heard the name Weston Wickman in their entire lives and never seen me, you know, like, so like, thinking back on it, you know, it's a little naive, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I just want to go there, like, you know, if I win a national championship here, like, that's, that's what I'm you know, that's what I'm here to do. And like, obviously this would be the place like I could do it at because I've already done it, you know? Now, if I felt like I wasn't getting what I need here to win a national championship, maybe I move somewhere else, but like, I, I don't feel like I did. So I feel like I, I have everything I need here. So my first year at Chattanooga, like coming in, you know, like not winning a state title and stuff, a little disappointing, but like goals for college didn't really change. Like wanted to be a national champ, all American type deal. Um, First year, you know, kind of came in the room. Like, I would say I, I was, I was definitely losing. I wasn't getting like beat up or anything, but like I was losing for sure um, against like a lot of the guys in the room, um, especially like the older guys, the starters. And I was definitely losing to starters. You know, like backup guys, I was probably like beating or like right there with, but like the starters were definitely beating me. Um, which sucked, but like it was nothing new for me, you know, like I'd been beat up in practice my whole life. That's how I got better at wrestling. So like, I was like, okay, you know, and I kind of expected that coming into college too. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be like the best in the room or anything. I knew I wasn't going to be a guy who steps in a college room and like is beating, you know, all Americans and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just worked hard, wrestled. I felt like, you know, I could probably done better at some of the open tournaments my red shirt year. Um, drop some matches, just like, you know, being, I don't know, just like being new to like college wrestling stuff, drop some matches, wasn't rest like didn't always wrestle the best. And, but it, overall, I felt like I got a lot better. Definitely learned a bunch my freshman year and kind of like found my spot on the team, I guess, that way. Guys that like come into college and they're like, yeah, I never got a takedown until like January or something. Like, dude, you're probably a bitch then. Like, you're probably a pussy. Or you're like, like I mean, like if you now if you say you get beat up until like you know like your first year, like yeah, I believe that. Like so did I. You know, like I was getting beat up by the starters. I was getting beat up by Kyle when I got here. Like I was still getting beat up by Kyle. Um, but like, come on, you couldn't get a takedown in however many months of wrestling. Like, I mean, I'm not quick and fast, but I could probably blast double. Like you know, catch someone, get someone tired. You know, like, that's a, that's a, where a lot of my takedowns got. Like, you know, we do a 10-minute go or something like that. I get you tired in five, and I beat you in the next five minutes. Like, like that's, like, come on. Like, people that say, oh, yeah, I didn't even get a takedown my whole first year. Like, bro, you probably weren't fucking wrestling hard enough then. First bit of success in Chattanooga was I beat the Camel Kid my second year here. I was starting 157-pounder. 
end of the season. It was like the weird COVID season. Um, so like we didn't have that much competition. But yeah, I beat, he was ranked number one in our conference. Um, I think he was a top, t- or not top 20 guy, but like he was like 26 or something like that in the country at the time. Um, and I beat him. And so I would say that was my first bit of success. Got SoCon freshman of the year that year. Didn't wrestle very good at the conference tournament. So like my third year coming in, obviously like SoCon freshman of the year didn't really matter to me that much. Like, you know, like it mattered that like I was, you know, decent for the SoCon, I guess, but like in, in big spectrum, that doesn't really matter, you know. Um, Late Nagan conference, was ready to come back and compete and just like struggled through injuries that whole year. Um, just like had a hard, really hard time with my shoulders and affected the way I wrestled. I wasn't able to shoot very much, had to wrestle way more defensively. And then that whole year was trying to like rebuild my style, trying to get confidence in myself. It was like, I would have like, like little sparks and lights of confidence and like right where I wrestled good. And then I would wrestle like dog shit and then I would wrestle good. And then I'd wrestle like dog shit. And like, you know, like I almost beat a ranked guy, like, um, and let him come back and beat me. Almost beat, like, had Cody Bond from App State on his back, let him come back and beat me. Like, you know, pinned an SIUE kid, pinned, or not pinned, but beat an Illinois kid, um, which is pretty cool. Like, I had these, like, matches, but as far as, like, I was just struggling with my shoulders. So that, that year was really disappointing. I ended up getting to the end of the seat, or I got a concussion one, one meet. Um, they threw, they pulled the kid's red shirt at my weight. We started splitting matches, and I ended up losing a wrestle off at the end of the year, right before conference for the spot. So, injury wise, like I had another, so I've had two surgeries during high school, and then I had a surgery my first year here when I was here after I wrestled in the scu- so the scuffle, and then. Um, come back and I start and like that year, like I had shoulder problems, but it wasn't like, you know, the end of the world or anything like that. It was just like, you know, they hurt. And then my second year here, it was like, they were God awful. Like in pain 24 seven, seven days a week, wrestling made it worse, lifting made it worse, competing made it terrible. You know, it was hurt, it would hurt when I sleep, stuff like that. Um, It just sucks, man, especially with like being a college wrestler, like, and having these like chronic shoulder problems like it's not like you know I got injured had surgery and it was like you know I couldn't come you know I didn't have confidence or anything it was just like I was in pain 24 7 and there's nothing I could do like there's I got told there's no more surgeries I could have unless I wanted a shoulder replacement and to get a shoulder replacement you have to be done wrestling um or you have to be older and so like there was just like nowhere I could turn um it was just deal with the pain and then you have this aspect of it like you know like obviously i love wrestling so i want to stay in it for that but then like i can't let my team down either so i now i have to do everything i you know that now i have to do whatever it takes to win a match because not only do i want to do it but my my team needs me in a dual aspect um and so like if if that means hanging on to a leg and like my shoulders like you know popping in and out while i'm hanging on to it like that that's what it means um, and so it's just like, there's a lot of pressure on yourself and it's just hard to deal with because you like, I, I, at least for me, I feel like such a, like I owe my team so much because like I'm filling a spot. There's only 10 guys that get to wrestle for our team. And I'm filling one of those spots. And so for me to like use an injury as an excuse of why I lost a match, like that's not an excuse. Like, like then give it to some, if you're, if you're injured and you can't wrestle, give it the spot to someone else. Um, so like me, I was filling one of those spots. So my job was to win for the team and it, it's hard to deal with that. So after I lost my match for the wrestle off, um, we finished out the year. I think we had like one duel left and you know, the conference tournament and the nationals and stuff like that. Pretty depressing couple weeks for me. Um, just not myself for those couple weeks and sucked. Um, took some time off after that. I think like maybe two weeks or something like that. Week, two weeks. Um, put together a game plan to try to get my shoulders better that summer. 
and try to get bigger because I was going to move up weight classes, move to 165, 157. And Wilder came down, trained with us in Chattanooga. My Wilder's my brother. Um, came down, trained with us in Chattanooga, lived with me. And then my schedule is basically like lift five days out of the week, Monday through Friday, wrestle three of those days, rehab every single day. Um, I was doing that, did really well on it. Um, our, we had 11 weeks as a team where we had like scheduled practices, five, five wrestling practices a week. You were supposed to, uh, you're supposed to be at three of them. And, uh, I would go even, so I would wrestle in three of them, go watch the other two. And even the one, and I was, I think I was the only one on our team to make it to all 11 weeks. I was just like, I'm not missing anything. Like I have to get better this summer. I have to get stronger this summer and I have to fix my shoulders this summer. There was like three main things, get better wrestling, get stronger, fix my shoulders. And I, I, I did everything I freaking could. Um, that summer trained really hard, ate right, got bigger, added, added muscle to my body. My shoulders were feeling pretty good coming into the season and stuff like that. I was feeling a lot better wrestling wise and finish the summer mindset going into the season is like, yep, I'm 65 pounder. Like we're going to wrestle and like plan is win nationals, you know, and hopefully like injuries don't, you know, bar me from competing. I went into 65 knowing that there's a lot of guys at 65. Honestly, there's multiple weights this year that are really stacked. I mean, it's college wrestling. So every year is pretty stacked up, but like, there's a lot of weights. There's a lot. So many good guys, man. Um, but yeah, just, you know, goal's still the same. Win a national title and doesn't matter who's in my way, beat them. Definitely coming into, like, the season, like, I'm not scared of the good guys. Like, I like wrestling good guys. Like, when whenever I was splitting matches that past season and, like, the like this season, like, I ask for the, like, if we're splitting matches, like, I'll ask for the better guy. Because, guy. like... Both, like, I mean, last year, like, it was, like, I was the starter, so, like, I kind of got, like, dibs on the matches I wanted, but, like, we were still splitting matches. Um, so, like, I would ask for, like, the guys that I thought were going to be harder to wrestle. So, like, that's what I want. I want to beat the better guys. Like, I don't give a fuck about beating guys that I should beat. I want to beat the guys that I shouldn't beat. Um, and so, yeah, coming into the season, and then, like, instantly I started having lower back problems. I started having back spasms. And I end up having a, uh, not a herniated, but a bulging disc in my back. I have no idea which one. Um, but the lower left side of my back, started having a bulging disc. Um, and then I had like a, a deformity in my back, like the bone in my back or something like that. But they said it, that's probably been there for a while. So, so I don't think that really affects anything. It was the bulge in my back. That was like the main thing. Um, yeah, started having back problems, which kind of took me out of wrestling for a little bit, for like a week or so. But then it was like I, I couldn't go live still, so now it's my shoulders and my back. And then like first week of competition, we wrestled Wisconsin. Um, tough kids, six in the country. Um, wrestle, I wrestled Lamar. He was just better than me at the time. Uh, Dean Hermitty is his name. Uh, or I, I don't. I think that's wrong how you say his last name, but. Uh, yeah, he was just better than me. Wrestling hard, wrestled all I could. Like I felt like I didn't wrestle bad. He's just better than me. Um, that match, at least. And then, um, and then I wrestled the second match that day, a uh, little rock match, and it was like my body just gave out on me. I couldn't like do much. I was like getting power half. I felt like my shoulder dislocate. Um, come back in. My back was spasming up basically like was just like in the mat like I just wanted the match to be over with didn't care what the score was like I was just like I can't give up a major for the team and I need to get off the mat got off the mat like like didn't talk to anybody and kind of went like sat on my own and then like I was having a hard time like even just like untying my shoes like I couldn't feel my left arm I was getting like shooting pains down my legs um like I had a hard like it took me like probably like 10 to 15 minutes to take off my shoes because I couldn't grip my shoelaces or anything with my fingers. And then like, it took me like, you know, just as long to like take my singlet off and get my sweatpants on. And then like all the while I'm in the bleachers, like ha like doing this. Like I, I, and then I remember I had my shirt, both my arms through the sleeves of my shirt and I couldn't bring my shirt over my head. Um, 
and then like I started having like a back spasm, like a full body spasm, um, and my like arms were like, yeah, it was bad. I had my trainer and like he ended up like rubbing on my back and like getting it relaxed and everything like that. But that basically scared the shit out of me and like made me think about like, you know, can I wrestle anymore type deal stuff. And then, um, you know, had a couple of weeks, took a week off after that, like completely didn't do anything. Still went to practice and watch and stuff, but like didn't work out or nothing like that. Came back, was actually feeling but like feeling better, but I was like, okay, you know, probably done for the season, probably, probably done for good. So I talked to people close to me, um, George Carpenter, old teammate, Kyle and uh, Hunter Gamble, TJ Rochelle. And then I talked with Ben Askren too about it. Um, you know, and Ben thought it would be smart if I was done wrestling. Just like he, he, he said, he stated as a friend, he doesn't want to see me hurt myself. And he doesn't think that I'd be able to achieve my goals with my body, like the way my body is. Because the way I need to train to achieve my goals, my body can't handle that, which is fair. Um, and then I talked to Kyle. Kyle kind of like Kyle was like, as a competitor, I don't want to tell you to be done because like I know that there's always more. Um, but as a friend, I would like to see you be done. Um, like it is, he doesn't want to see me hurt myself and like really fuck up myself. Um, that was hard to handle. Like it was really hard, really depressing. Like we were like battling with myself every single day. Um, and then I kind of got back into it a little bit and wrestling. I was like, oh, maybe I can do this. Like, you know, like set a plan up to get a shot in my back and like, you know, maybe, and like that would help me feel better, help with the pain, stuff like that and get through the season. I just wouldn't wrestle in any tournaments. I would only wrestle singular matches probably like the good, like if, you know, if I have to, like if there's a good guy, I'd go out wrestle him type deal. Um, conference matches, stuff like that, but would never wrestle more than one match in a day to try to like stop like the back seizures and stuff. And then conferences, nationals, right? Um, but then I was wrestling, uh, fucked up my knee. Something MCL, um, I don't know, I got some MRIs today. We'll see how bad it is, but it's, a, it's an MCL injury, something, something to do with that. The Iowa duel coming up this weekend, really wanted to wrestle in that. It's an exciting duel. Um, it's gonna be cool. I think like 2,000 people are expected to show up or over 2,000 people, something like that. Um, probably the biggest crowd that since I've ever been here. Um, you know, probably would have a ranked guy at my weight class. Be a fun match. Go out there, wrestle hard. Probably be a hard match. It'd be fun. It'd just be fun time to wrestle, man. I just like, now it's just more for me. It's just be like, man, it would be fun to wrestle again. And rather than like, you know, like any, like there's literally just nothing behind it anymore. It's just like, man, I would just like to go wrestle. That's it. Like not for, not for to set myself up to get ranked or anything. It would just be like, man, I wish I could wrestle right that's 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 what I'm feeling right now it's just like I wish I could do the sport that I love